China shines in the global music market. Would you welcome from Tencent Music Entertainment, Mr. Ryan Liang, and to moderate the panel, flying all the way in from LA once again, a beautiful gentleman, Mr. Rob Schwartz. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. All right, thank you so much. And so thank you to Jasper for having this great conference every year. I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited to be with Ryan. Here you are. Um, Ryan, welcome. It's your first time here. Uh, Tencent Music Entertainment is a crucial partner for uh, uh, Music Matters and All That Matters. Everybody knows that, but it's your first time here. So tell me what your sort of initial impressions are, what your thoughts are being here. First of all, thank you very much, uh, Rob and uh, Music Matters. Uh, for, thank you for having me. Of course, this is my first time here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, TME has, Tencent Music has, has been a long lasting partner of All That Matters. Yes, yeah. because crucial, think, important partner. <laughs> because think it's, Jasper will tell you. It's great, uh, great uh, events to connect all the industrial professionals here and bring some great ideas. And uh, so, that's why I see a lot of uh, old folks uh, and of course, I, I'm meeting a lot of new friends these days. So uh, thank you, uh, uh, Music Matters. And uh, I can't wait uh, to uh, share more of uh, the, the China market developments uh, here in this session. Right, right. So yeah, that's what we're interested in. Uh, a lot has changed in China since 2019. Um, so hopefully you can bring us up to date on what's going on in China, what changes have happened since 2019, last five years. Sure, my pleasure. So uh, before I share more, just uh, do a quick survey here. So um, is anybody uh, visit China uh, after 2019? Uh, uh, Please raise your hands. Not so many people, yeah, a few over there. Cool. One in the back, we saw you back there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, and uh, I mean, good, I think I, I find my value here on the stage. <laughs> so, um, First of, first of all, it's a good news because uh, they've seen um, uh, increasing, uh, increasing uh, development, a lot of uh, involvement and, and develop, uh, growth here, uh, in China in the past five years. So just a quick uh, number. So according to IPR report, uh, so uh, China is uh, uh, ranked uh, on uh, number seven uh, in 2019 and uh, uh, globally uh, in terms of uh, uh, market size. And uh, now in 2023, it's already uh, ranked number five. Right, globally. it's rising so. up. And of course, probably most people know that's way up from let's say 10 years ago ten. when it wasn't even in the top 10. Exactly. So top five is pretty impressive, yeah. Yes, and um, a main force is actually is the digital music segments uh, where we nowadays there are uh, over 150 million paying users digital paying users in China market. And wow. if you back wow. to 2008, 19, the number just uh, around uh, 70 million. Yeah, so really huge growth. And I think we discovered that it's the second biggest streaming market in the world now, which yes. is pretty impressive. We believe so. I think yeah. it's the second largest digital music market. Right. Uh, but right. we still think there is a potential uh, to, to grow because uh, if you look at the pay penetration, it's around 20%. Uh, these days, but if you compare with uh, the um, developed market average, it's around like 40 to 50 percent. Right, right. So there's room for growth there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But beyond that, I think uh, if it, if everybody can do a quick math, if we got number two in the digital music market, but overall number five in the overall music music market. So what's lag behind, or in other words, what can the room potential growth opportunity going forward? I think uh, it's uh, the we pay a lot of attention and also we do see a lot of traction in other segments of, uh, uh, of the value chain. For example, uh, merchandising, live performance, and um, yeah, uh, uh, even digital and physical albums. We think a lot of uh, uh, exciting things going on. Right, right. I think you were, you were mentioning when we talked about uh, there's a lot more like 360 degree deals going on now and stuff. Maybe you can talk about that? Yes, I think uh, um, if, 
if we look at uh, in the evolving uh, uh, engagement in the in the market, so the music fans now here in China not just want to listen to the new release to follow the the artist, they love to build authentic and long lasting uh, engagement with the artists and musicians. Right, right. That's awesome. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. Um, and of course, we all know that China is really looking to grow and collaborate with the international music market. I think there's a lot of space there sure. for China to enter the international music market. Um, how can foreign artists make a stronger impact in China? Do you have any ideas about that? That's a very good question. Yeah. So um, first of all, I would like to share a piece of good news. So nowadays, China, Chinese uh, music fans listen, uh, streaming um, non-Mandarin songs more than ever before. Wow, cool. Yes, <laughs> that, that's uh, uh, according to the data of uh, dance and music uh, entertainment platforms. So uh, it benefits from uh, more diversified music preference, especially of the Gen Z, of course. And uh, also, I think, uh, as well as the uh, continuous efforts in promoting and marketing uh, international artworks uh, uh, by the streaming platforms. So as a result, everybody like labels, artists, uh, international, uh, the foreign, foreign labels, and artists can benefit from the results, the good results from the market. So if I do to give a true advice yeah. uh, for international uh, partners, I think uh, two. So uh, one is understand the market and uh, uh, engage more. And a second is to find a reliable and capable partner. Right, so. right, that's always crucial. I think in for all uh, markets in East Asia, it's always defining the crucial partner in the exactly. market. I think that holds true for China, for Japan especially, and Korea. You know, to find the best partner for yourself in the market is absolutely crucial, right? Right, right, right. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, despite that, you know, a lot of overseas companies find it challenging to break into the Chinese music market. You know, can Tencent Music Entertainment help with that in any way? Yeah, I think uh, I think that's the, the one you 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 want to look at look at the China China opportunity. I think the TME uh, uh, is the one you want to partner with. So uh, if I go back to the engage more, understand and engage more. Uh, uh, piece of suggestion. So first, I think, I think uh, TME uh, has, is, owns the infrastructure, the digital in, uh, music streaming infrastructure right. in China. So The biggest uh, yeah, company so by far. So you can access to uh, nearly 600 million users monthly and uh, over like uh, 120 million paying users uh, in China. So I think this is the core. We, we, are, we build the business from the music streaming platform and social, social platform. So we'll, be, we'll continue to build, build on that. I think we still have the growth uh, uh, coming up. So the, we have a strong core. And beyond that, as we mentioned, engagement, right? So uh, nowadays, as the, the music fans want more engagement across merchandising, albums, live events, and uh, it, it actually takes to into our T a TMS new strategy is two engines, is platforms uh, plus contents. So right. provides more uh, holistic approach for international labels and artists to engage um, uh, their fans in China and also uh, make uh, commercialization opportunities from them. For example, I can few, name few, a few products. Please. If you may, yeah, if please. you're interested. Um, uh, um, first of all, uh, albums across digital and physical albums. So, uh, in 2020, uh, we, we, we actually we distribute and uh, market uh, the album from J. Cho, which makes IPI number one in two, uh, globally in 2022. Wow. It sells, wow. it sold uh, over 600, uh, uh, 6 million. Uh, pieces, albums. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, of course, J. Cho is legendary artist yes, worldwide. So, yeah. Yes, that's very, a, long, a very good partner. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, beyond that, I think that uh, leverage our technology and the user expertise, we build a lot of innovation products on our platform as well. Uh, for example, Chao Ji Ding Yue, uh, it's a super, uh, super fan group. Right. Yeah, so you can uh, subscribe and become a member and you can access to uh, exclusive um, uh, artist updates and videos and greetings, something like that. And um, uh, along that, we have a product name that Tap Tap, Tan Yi Tan. So, so basically, if a new, if you have a new release for the artist, and I will become uh, to to uh, to to innovate as a mini music uh, uh, game, mini game. 
So it's uh, like tapped into the rhythm based gaming. So wow. you can enjoy and play with the 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 the, the songs you you uh, the the artists you love. So wait a minute, I gotta understand this. So you basically have a game that integrates with the song on yes. the platform, and, and you play along with it. Yes. Wow. Also on my our streaming platform. That's all in one. Wow, that's okay. cool. That's, that's some cool. of the innovation yeah. I just named it on, online. Yeah. Um, if we we, we uh, move to more holistic approach, so actually we uh, we do uh, entertain the live performance uh, market uh, since the pandemic. So right. Uh, if as I mentioned, so more increasingly more and more international artists uh, launch their tour in China nowadays. And um, uh, I take example last la uh, last year, Alan Walker actually do a, another tour in China. Right. Yes, and uh, at TME as the, uh, the producer of the, the tour and, and uh, at full arrangement of the six tours in wow. China. That, wow, that's, wow. Uh, that's a new progress of, yeah. of yeah. our- Do you know offhand how many shows he played in China? Six. Six shows, okay. Six tours. Yeah. Okay, yes. great, great, yes. great. And, uh, and, uh, if, and we moved to uh, merchandising. I think we also, uh, be, to, uh, to uh, innovate in the merchandising part, if we launch uh, the product like Starlight Cards, where uh, the fans, uh, it's a merchandising featuring the, 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 the artists. We, we, we partner with a very huge success with uh, s some of the regional and Korean uh, labels and yeah, uh, yeah. entertainment giants. Yeah, well, obviously the super fans are gonna love the merchandise. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so if you think about the China opportunity, I think we, we, we do, uh, we would love to, to talk with you and then to see potential collaborations. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, wow. Uh, Tencent Music Entertainment also does the Tencent Music Entertainment Awards. Uh, I think they were in Macau this this year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us more about Tencent Music Entertainment Awards and maybe future possible collaborations? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, speak of uh, TMEA, so Tencent Music Entertainment Award. Uh, this a uh, landmark music events. Uh, this half week, uh, award award night plus uh, music festival. And um, yeah, this is uh, we make making a landmark uh, events and continue to raise the bar. So this year, the latest version uh, in Macau, we uh, featured one uh, more than one hundred performances. Wow, that's big. Uh, and big. Uh, of uh, international artists, for example, major labels, uh, uh, regional regional uh, companies like uh, 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 SM, JYP, Hype. Uh, YG and uh, also th uh, th uh, Thailand's uh, GMM. So yeah, yeah. K-pop uh, is really massive in yes. China. Yeah. Yes. And uh, our goal actually is making a really global music, a top global event. So not it, it does, does not mean just more artists, but we aim for higher quality of performances, uh, more fresh innovation, and more meaningful music exchange. So um, I think uh, we welcome. And, and encourage you to participate and pay attention to TMEA, and we we'll see uh, th this this uh, continuous effort to build on it. Fantastic, fantastic. So yeah, you talked a lot about how people can, you know, maybe enter the China market through you guys or just through a reliable partner. But uh, Tencent Music Entertainment also interested in expanding internationally, making a bigger footprint internationally. Maybe you can tell us about that. Yes, uh, I think. Uh, or what we, collaborations you'd like to do? Yes, yeah. we actually, the other thing I really uh, look forward to because we are taking a strategic approach to our inter international uh, footprint, uh, majorly from three pers perspectives. So, one uh, is based on our core uh, platform uh, business. So, we, we have uh, our music uh, streaming business, jo uh, uh, product jokes, and also music social platform, Weezing. Uh, which launched in Southeast Asia. Uh, that's, I think, we, we, sh we leverage our uh, technology and right. uh, experience and also combine with, of course, the local market characteristics and we make it, make it to serve, uh, provide a better streaming uh, platform uh, services to the local, local users, this one. And second, I think, is provide uh, uh, service to the musician. So, if, for example, in China, we have already have uh, 400,000 uh, independent musicians wow. uh, on our uh, Tencent mu uh, wow. musician platform. So they wow. distribute their own uh, songs to our platform in China. So when we think about more services, we think, hey, can we do more value added uh, to them overseas? So nowadays, well, we uh, distribute their work, our works to 
uh, to to the international market as well. Right. Like we cooperate with other uh, pl uh, international platforms. Right. Uh, right. Second and third, and third, I uh, we also exploring uh, live events um, of our strategic uh, uh, artist. Uh, for example, uh, Joker Xue, which are, uh, earlier this year uh, uh, launched his his tour in uh, Singapore, and we're coming up uh, at the end of this year. We have a uh, Jane Zhang. Yes. Wow, Jane Zhang. Uh, yeah. Here in, in Singapore. Legendary, legendary artist. Yes. Yeah. Um, so just quickly, you can tell me about a Tencent Global Music Outreach is a program that you're doing. Uh, I haven't heard about it, so maybe you can explain it to me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, the, uh, Global Music Outreach is our latest effort to uh, bridge uh, the China uh, music market to the world, actually, and uh, promoting a, a potential collaboration. So uh, you mainly have uh, three uh, experts. One uh, is uh, live performance. Second is a professional experience share sharing, and third is in, in, uh, industrial discussion today, like like today. Right. So, uh, uh, if I remember uh, correctly, is we have uh, delivered a great live performance events in uh, uh, three days ago in uh, Grand Prix Singapore. Right. Yes, that's amazing stage. Fantastic. Yeah, and Fantastic. Uh, yeah, also uh, we bring the f uh, the five uh, group uh, uh, five artists and bands. Uh, groups uh, we we bring we brought to the Singapore and uh, they also uh, visit some uh, the local music college yesterday to share their professional experience. Oh, great! So yeah. also doing education. Yes, that's yes, fantastic. exactly. And 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 today I think we that's that's our honor to bring some of them on the stage. Yeah, we're yes. just about to do that. So let's bring on the stage Brandon's oh Brandon's own. Brittany Lee. Brittany, what are you doing way down there? Come on. I am coming Get to up the here. stage. Thank Get you so up here. much. <laughs> Woo, Hello, everyone. Brittany it's Brittany from again. <laughs> Brandon. You guys know Brandon, right? They're putting on this conference. Yes. I am so proud to be introducing the next two artists from Tencent Music Entertainment Group. Not because I'm Chinese, because they've actually put on an amazing show over the weekend in the center of Singapore, right across from the street. And uh, I'm going to introduce the two artists onto the stage as soon as they finish putting up the chairs. <laughs> But Ryan is completely right about TME's new ambitions in terms of offline sort of performances and live performances because we've seen these two artists flooded the floor with fans all across Singapore, Southeast Asia, as well as the Chinese population that live over here across Southeast Asia. So let's welcome our two artists from TME, Liu Lian and Chen Renyu. Let's welcome. Woo! And this is a show you're not going to miss because there is going to be a little performance at the end. Right. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Have a seat. Relax. Chill out. <laughs> We're all just going to chat here. Um, maybe you both can introduce yourself and uh, say hello to the stage, to the, to the audience. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Liu Li, and I'm a Chinese uh, songwriter and singer. I've also got a jazz band called Mr. Miss, um, and it's my first time in Singapore, and so glad to be with you guys. Wow. Hello, everyone. My name is Qian Runyu, and um, I'm a Chinese singer-songwriter. Uh, I live in Beijing. And um, I play this traditional instrument called pipa, and I write a lot of English songs. Um, and I'm also a Tencent artist, so um, very nice to meet you here. Yeah, Liu, feel free to speak in Putonghua. We have a professional oh, translator mind, here. Yeah, and, but her uh, English is actually very good, <laughs> yeah. right? So but, let's, but let's see. feel free to use to Putonghua <laughs> right. if, you, if you want, yeah. Um, so yeah, both, maybe both of you can tell me about the musical styles that most attracts you and you know, you're most interested in and performing in, etc. Actually, my taste in music um, varies from, t from age to age. When I, when I was in middle school, I like um, new metal and emo punk, wow. which is quite different from the music style I'm uh, making now. And at that time, uh, Linkin Park is just like, he hit the Chinese people like a hurricane and I'm one of their biggest fan. Well, you're in luck because they just reformed, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with a female lead singer as well, right? right? Yeah. Right. Wrong, yeah. I love her. Yeah, and later on when I'm 
uh, no longer that sentimental and angry, I begin to listen to uh, jazz music, and I love I, I love Chad Baker and Stacy Kin, and I also love a a new. A uh, singer called Willow. If you know that, yeah, if sure, you know her, sure. Oh, yeah, I, I, I quite, I love her music a lot. And yeah, uh, the Will Smith, the uh, Will daughter. Will Smith, yeah, yeah. Jaden's sister. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I love her a lot. Yeah, she's yeah. really blowing up. Not that uh, she doesn't have famous parents, but yeah, she's really. Her music is great. Yeah, yeah her music is great. That's it. Um, yeah. Um, I think my my music taste is very diverse because I grew up playing this traditional instrument, so I'm like I was immersed in this traditional kind of sounds. And then when I go to college, I studied the electronic production and sound design. So that's that brought me to another world with electronic music and production. And and then I fell in love with songwriting. And I grew up listening to like Rihanna, Beyonce, and I love like Ariana Grande. I'm like a pop girly, and um, that just made my music very um, diverse and interesting, I'd say. And sure. also, um, I really like Billie Eilish. I don't right. know if that's cliche. Yeah, well, you have a <laughs> lot of... It's not cliche. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I started listening to her when, I, when she was 16. And I like, immediately fell in love with her because right. she's got that voice that I have, like, we have, like, small little voices, like, when we sing. So, yeah. She's also incredibly innovative. I mean, a lot of different yes, sounds exactly. in her music, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also have to shout out My Hometown because you went to Berkeley School of Music in Boston, Boston. which is my hometown. So we have Boston to give game. it a big up. And yes. it's, a great, it's one of the leading music schools in the world, obviously. Yeah. So, we always yeah. love a snow day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, the, the winters in Boston have actually been really light in the last three or four years. Really? But, oh, yeah. It used to be much worse when I was a kid. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's talk about Tencent Music Entertainment Global Music Outreach. Um, what are your expectations as you're part of this in Singapore, your trip to Singapore, and uh, what have you been doing these days here? We'll start with Leah. Um, I was, uh, I, I, I went to the industry party last night, which is very, very awesome because I get to meet a lot of people from the music industry from all over the world. And that's kind of the, like, the gap I want to breach with my music. So that's been very helpful. And the first day I got here, which was like the 14th, we put up a performance on the center of Singapore. Also, that was my first time in Singapore, and um, I brought my electric pipa here and um, sang with it, and like people were excited, and uh, it's something new, they've never seen it before, and I'm so glad that I, I was given this opportunity to show our music, our culture, and what's been happening with the Chinese music industry to like the world, and yeah, I'm it's feeling blessed. Nice. And I also uh, went to the nice safari and Universal Studio. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it, it's also my first time to sing in Singapore, and it's, it's my second time. The first time uh, I uh, perform abroad is to the Northern Africa. Uh, wow. <laughs> a jazz wow. festival. And this is my second time wow. to perform wow. overseas. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys are here in, you know, Singapore and also at this great conference. Um, what would you like hope to learn more about in this international setting or what kind of exchanges do you hope to have with other artists or industry people? I'm actually very, very curious to like talk to people about what they have in mind about Chinese like music industry. Cause uh, like back then, we mandopop pop was the big thing, but now like there are a lot of international music, uh, a lot of international musicians that got brought up, brought into China, and having like a lot of really big performances. And I, I myself is like a, a big fan of like English music, and um, I'm writing in that too. And uh, I think I'm just very curious, like to talk to people about like what our industry have become and um, yeah. 
Um, maybe I want to know about the most trendy topic about AI, uh, what AI will do to our music making, and I want to know your attitudes towards it, or, um, positive or negative, uh, because um, maybe it's quite different uh, when we talk about it about, uh, uh, overseas. Maybe yeah. it's different from, from your aspect. So yeah. I want to know something of uh, how you look at it and uh, what do you think that will uh, have impact on the musicians? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's good. Good point. And I'll, I'll just take a little detour here because AI has been discussed a lot on this stage already. So if you guys didn't see the wonderful panel with Sylvan from Believe and Paul from YouTube Music, that they really dove into AI. And, you know, one of the things is it's really a lot of unknowns about AI. So it's hard to answer some of the questions, but a lot of people have discussed it. And of course, Dr. Ben Godzilla was here as well discussing it. So that's been a key topic in Music Matters this year, and it's going to continue to be a key topic. And we're all sort of exploring it together and finding out what will AI mean for the music industry? Will there be, you know, just songs completely written by AI and musicians are gonna become less important or composers are gonna become less important? Yeah, we don't believe that, but certainly, you know, having AI help songwriting or influence songwriting, yeah, that's probably gonna happen. But we're all sort of experiencing this together, right? At the same time, we're seeing where it leads, right? And nobody really knows. I mean, there are a lot of experts, like Dr. Ben was here, he's an expert, but nobody exactly knows where it's gonna lead. So something that it's kind of cool that a global culture is experiencing this together and we're all kind of in it together at this point. Which, which, would you actually eventually try to dabble into AI, utilizing AI to create music as well, eventually? I've already used some Oh, tools. my uh, bad. Yeah. She's already used AI. She's ahead no, of the curve. Fine. I'm, I'm, I really want to, um, I'm really curious and interested in new things. So when AI occur, uh, when AI appeared, uh, I used it at the first time. Ah. No, at the, yeah. Looks like next time we need to have Liu Lian to present us how she uses AI to create music and attracts yeah, all these fans that literally floods the area, maybe today, <laughs> outside the Hilton Hotel as well. So, uh, Qian, would you uh, also use AI, double into experiment with AI with music? Oh, um, as a tool, yes, but I just hope that it won't take my job in the next <laughs> it year won't. or so. It won't. We will <laughs> all be here please protect don't. you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that any of us really believe that, that it can take, I mean, it could create some music, but I don't think that it can create the, the creativity and the innovation and the energy of a live artist. I, I don't think that's, that's the, what's gonna happen, so. Oh, that's reassuring, yeah. thank you. <laughs> That's what we're here for, is to reassure you. Um, but yeah, so you guys are here in, in Singapore. Like, what connections and, uh, you know, maybe possible cooperation would you hope to have with other artists or industry people or something like that? Um, I'm always looking for, like, new artists and producers to collaborate with because I, I love, like, being in sessions. Um, cause like, uh, when I was making my last album, I was in LA and I was in so many sessions and I loved like just meeting new people and getting their, getting inspired by them. And I think every musician is so, so talented. And also, uh, I need all the help I can get from the industry people cause I'm doing something weird. I'm doing something new and, um, I really want to. I believe in the thing that I'm doing and I'm really, really passionate about it and I really want other people to believe it too. And um, I do need a lot of help and I do have a very solid support system right now with Tintin and with a lot of friends who believes in this thing that I know is gonna happen, <laughs> which is um, our traditional music. It's gonna, it deserves to be heard by the world by more audiences. Yeah. What was the question again? Yeah, you got, you got it. <laughs> oh, okay. Whatever. Don't worry, everybody will look, you know, look for you guys after this session. So we'll be helping you for sure, no problem. Yep. Hey, thank you. Because <laughs> uh, I always wrote my songs alone in my bedroom for the most of the time. And uh, I've 
I got a partner, so I only discuss with my partner, and I've, I've never been to a writing session with other musicians. So maybe I, I think it's time for me to try it. I'll write with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Who else wants to write with Lillian? <laughs> Raise your hand right now. <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Chien, I want to dive a little bit more into this. I think people have got it, but maybe everybody didn't hear it. So basically, you use the pipa, a traditional um, Chinese instrument, and you're working mainly in like electronic music, mm -hmm. soundscapes, maybe some R&B and, and that sort of thing, maybe pop as well. Uh, when you're trying to mix these styles and create something totally new, as you said, what kind of like difficulties or, or problems have you encountered or, you know, what, what is the challenges in doing that? Um, so um, a little bit about my past. I, uh, I started playing pipa since I was seven and um, I s studied like intensively till I was 18, I was in this music school like for just people playing. But I always, I love just to make my own kind of sound and that kind of pissed my teacher off. <laughs> and then, yeah, I decided to just go and create my own music and then I started learning production. And when I started like singing and songwriting and putting people in my production, it honestly sounded it didn't sound good at the at the beginning. So that was one of the first difficulties that I encountered because I didn't have a lot of references that I can just like copy and learn from. Uh, a lot of times I just, I try to figure it out on my own and a lot of times it just didn't sound good. And um, that was like the first stage of problems. And then the next stage would be that I, I trust in my music and, um, and I let other people hear it. I tell my ideas to the industry people and they don't believe it. They don't think it's gonna work um, because I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't as good. So then I just like practice and I like, write a lot of songs until maybe the last album that I was making, it was last year and um, it started, it started to sound good. And um, so last year I had a really, really um, major collaboration, like for me, cause I, uh, I love the artist for so long. It's Aurora from Norway. Um, she's one of my favorite artists of all times. And I met her in Beijing when she was uh, coming for a meet and greet. And I played a song for her with Pipa. And she's like, oh, I love that sound. What's an instrument? And then we started talking. And then we started talking about collaborations. And then and it happened on her last album. So that's one of the major um, turning point for me because it's, it's not just in my head anymore, you know? Just like the people going international, like people will like it. Like when they hear it, it's not just like in my imagination anymore. Like I'm not doing this alone anymore. And that meant a lot to me. And um, I think I fully believe that it's gonna happen because like we have this amazing traditional sounds, not just people, a lot of other instruments. And last generation, there are a lot of the really talented players, performers like my teachers, but they had problems. They had language barriers. They have like, they didn't have the means to travel to show the world, but like it's gonna happen for our generation. It's either me or other people. I don't care, but I, I think it deserves to be heard. Yeah, I mean, definitely we're in a new, a new era of music industry where people are collaborating from all over the world. But I'm interested to say, to hear what you will answer because you said like it didn't sound good in the beginning and then somehow you're able to work it out. So it, so what changed? Was it the rhythm? Was it the tonal? Was it the, the melodies that you were able to, what, what actually changed? So it, all of a sudden it sounded good to you. I think it's, it's just me. I'm, <laughs> I'm the one that's, that's changed because um, I think it's a lot like when it doesn't, it didn't sound good. I just, I didn't believe it enough. And like in my mind, I'm just like always questioning because I hear a lot of things. Like people will say, uh, it's probably not gonna work. Uh, it sounds weird. And like, I, for like the longest time I was so, so scared that um, 
I just didn't. I just wasn't wow. sure enough. You know? So, so it's you that changed, not the music. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Wow, that is interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. Because it's it's always gonna sound good. Right. It's just like right. I'm not good enough to deliver it. But now I'm. I think I'm. I'm on the right track. Right, and I mean. Considering you're trying to do something completely different than what's been done before or quite different. I mean, I felt like you have a lot of challenges or a lot of, you know, maybe some doubt. How were you able to, like, plow through to, like, make it happen? Was there something that inspired you or? Um, I think that's kind of uh, what the years of yeah. practice, like, just playing pipa have formed my character Cause like uh, I used to have to practice like ten hours a day. Wow! Wow! That just that that changes you. That yeah. changes your brain. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> like sometimes you just like you just do it. You yeah. just do it until it it sounds good. Right. Yeah. It, right. It never right. for like the second in my head that I'm gonna give up. No. No. Right. I'm gonna practice. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, Brittany, you, also, you wanna yeah. I'm glad that I'm not sitting here to look pretty, but get to <laughs> ask question as well to Liu Lian. So Liu Lian, we uh, kind of note that you started out as an independent artist. You know, your voice is your instrument, right? Yep. And then you joined a lot of Chinese singing variety shows. It it just blew up overnight. And how do you see these two career paths, you know, meeting together, does it change you? Do you still keep yourself, you know, to, you know, when, to, when it comes to music? Oh, going to the TV shows um, makes people uh, know better about me because when um, I first uh, be, uh, began to do the music, with my partner, no one listened to us. When uh, I, I remember that uh, during the f first three years, when we go to a, a live bar and we sing, and it's free, uh, it's free, and you can order a beer and uh, and sit there and listen. But only maybe two or three people sitting there, and um, the bartender and he can play sa saxophone oh, wow. uh, and. Later on, when no one is sitting there, he will come and he will came and played his sex saxophone with us and took uh, be our company. So uh, it's it's sort of lonely actually. And so when I go to the TV show, uh, I'm happy that um, people know us and they may may want to hear some of our songs. Mm -hmm. Right. But also your music is good. That's why you needed a channel to broadcast your music to everyone. Once everyone realized it and they're like, oh my God, who is this person, right? So, <laughs> yeah. I think the next question is, you're actually a jazz singer, right? <laughs> uh, part of me is jazz singer, I part think. Part of you is jazz singer, but you started out as a jazz singer, yeah, right? Yeah. And would you say that jazz is your passion or, you know, do or are you have other passions as well in terms of music genre. So jazz is pretty much to your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you be able to, have you ever thought about writing a jazz songs in English, especially for a global audience in the future? Um, actually, I've already written two or three songs in English. Uh, and the first, uh, the first song is a bossa nova song called uh, Funny Me Nice Song, and it's my first song. Yeah. Wow. The, the song I, uh, wrote uh, just when I go into the college. Mm. Wow. When, when do we get to hear this? <laughs> you can always hear that in, in maybe Apple Music or Spotify. Ah, I uh, see. Or, or, or Tencent QQ music. Yeah, and Tencent <laughs> music. Oh, of course, Tencent music. And I've already, uh, and I also wrote another song called uh, Queen of Your Own. It's uh, Chicago style, I think. Uh, like Chicago John Kander. Wow. And, and cool. So cool. you can listen to it and uh, leave your comment. Thank you. On all, <laughs> on all the popular streaming platforms of the world, particularly Tencent Music. Yeah, 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 Tencent Music. Yeah. 
All right. I think this, these are the questions. Then we have a little show from Chen Renu. Hold, hold on. Let's see. Chen, can we, can we prod you into playing? Can we convince are you, you ready? to play? Yes, can we force just, you to play? We'll hold, I'll hold you guys here for two more minutes and then lunch. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Does anybody know what a pea pot is? Any ideas? Raise your hands if you know what a pea pot is. It's not a food. It's an instrument. <laughs> it's not a food. But it's also actually a, a fruit in China, isn't it? Well, not, not what she's holding in her hand. But. <laughs> and she's also got an electric, uh, electric pea pot. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you bring, bring it? Because we don't have an amp. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, hello. Is this working? Um, I have something prepared for you. I just got this people last night, so I didn't get a lot of practice. <laughs> but um, today is Mid Autumn Festival. It's Zhongqiujie today, and I'm gonna be playing Chunjiang Hua Yue Ye, because Hai Shang Ming Yue Gong Chao Sheng. Everyone. Happy Middle Autumn and, Festival, everyone. Yeah, and a little something just to showcase that you can sing with it. Um, this is one of my original songs. Oh, I tiptoe around your ego. Gotta be careful of what I say. Cause I know too many secrets that will make you go by work. Okay, it sounds a lot better with the production, so. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Chair. Please check out my music on QQ Music and Spotify and what have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, all the panelists. Great job. Thank you. 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 Th